Right, now we need to composite our depth passes to create some depth of field in After Effects. So this is going to involve combining the depths of two different render layers. Not particularly challenging, but what is challenging is doing this with the camera lens blur effect. So what we need for this series is going to be fine because we only need a little bit of defocusing in the background. But if you're looking to do a much shallower depth of field or a much stronger blurring in the background or the foreground, then you might want to have a look at Fast Bokeh or Frisch Luft. Those are going to be effects that give you far better results, but they are paid third party effects, not what you can find in After Effects. So I'm just going to show you what we have available inside of After Effects, but what we need is all right. But if you do need something a lot more advanced or you just want a better experience doing it, check out those other plugins. All right, let's get started. OK, so right now this is looking pretty good. One more thing that we need to do before we do anything else in Maya, though, we need to set up our rock passes and we also need to set up depth. And I want to set up depth first because the, pa the rock passes are going to be the same thing that we did for the ship. So for the environment depth, we're going to take a copy of our environment, which is this. I'm going to reset this curves effect. On the extractor, we're going to select depth. And if we turn this layer on and just look at the depth like this, this is the entire scene minus the ship and minus the dust. The dust is not going to be included in here. It's basically just the depth of everything, which is the distance of that object from the camera. Now, this area here is actually transparent, but transparency in After Effects by default is black. If, if we looked at this in terms of black is closer to the camera, white is farther from the camera, then it makes it look like this is right at the camera. So that's something we need to solve. But what we're going to do, I'm going to take this environment depth. We're also going to take the ship depth. So if we turn this one on too, you can see now the ship is included here. And it looks like I already made a copy of that there. So I can delete this one. Pull this here. So we basically have both of these layers together. We're going to take them both, pre-compose them with Control shift c and I'll just call this Depth. You can do also Environment and Ship Depth if you want it to be more clear. And go inside this layer. We no longer need to solo them. Of course, the ground is going to be incorrect for right now. If you want to use that mat, you would want to grab a copy of your Environment Ground Mat. If you are doing the mat like that and you would want to say on the ship, it's going to be Luma inverted. OK, you would want to set that mat in here, but I'm not going to be doing that. So that's why I'm not including mine. And then we also to fix the fact that the sky is black here, we need to create a new solid. I'll just call this one sky. And then for the color, we'll just make this one white and click OK. You can also do the same thing with a fill effect. If I pull the sky underneath here, you could have whatever color solid you want. And you could do the whole thing with a fill effect and you could just set this one to white as well. OK. So now we got something that looks pretty good. Got this weird edge. And for this, I do need to set this to full so I can see this a little bit more clearly. So this edge, though, is, is not going to be apparent when we have our mat working. So I think actually this is this is going to look pretty good. So on this ship depth, I'm going to delete that curves and then instead I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. This is going to be our depth color correction. And for this, we really don't want to make individual color adjustments for the ship and for the environment because the depths need to be as one unit. So I could make everything darker or I could make everything brighter, but it doesn't really make sense to make the ship brighter or darker because that would change its position in space, which is not really what we want to do. So on this, I'm going to go a little bit higher up and you can see how light the ship is as it begins to come down and it gets darker and darker and darker as it gets closer and closer to the ground or basically it's not the ground, it's closer to the camera, which is making it darker. So this technically would be behind this rock here, which is fine. We'll have a look at that later. But you can make global adjustments. You can make everything darker or everything brighter. In this case, we just want to make sure that there's a, a subtle gradient. But in order to make adjustments that really make sense, we need to go back into our main composition and then we'll apply our depth and then we'll make adjustments based on what our depth of field is. So I mentioned that we we're going to be doing some Focusing with our camera with depth of field. 
And for that, we're going to turn off our environment ship depth, turn this layer off. And then right at the very top, this is going to be above everything except for the CC layer. We're going to create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to call that DOF for depth of field. And then we're going to add a camera lens blur effect. So if we apply that effect on right away, everything's going to look like it's out of focus. And then for this to really make sense, we really want this to be on full resolution. And the very first thing that you should do when you add on this effect is turn on repeat edge pixels. If, I, if you notice at the top here or around any of the sides, there's going to be that fringing. And that's because for blur to work, it has to average all the pixels around it. And there are no pixels around the edges, so they're going to look darker. So let's say repeat edge pixels, and that's going to basically just take the colors that are around the edges and just push them up. Okay, so we need to do something like that. But of course, I don't want the ship to be out of focus. I want the background to be a little bit soft, but not that out of focus. And I want the ground to be a little bit out of focus, but not this much. Okay, right. So what we can do, we can say that we want to use what is called a blur map or a depth map. So for this, we're going to click on layer and then select environment and ship depth. And then we can say effects and masks. We don't even have to go inside the environment and ship depth layer. So we can, we can make adjustments here if there were some clear problems with this, or we could just turn this layer off and do it directly in the comp here. So there are two options for you. I think this one is going to be a little bit easier, but there are cases where you might want to make adjustments to your other layers. If I just put a curves directly on this layer, then I go back up to my DOF layer. Because I say on here effects and masks, it will take note of my curves effect. Okay, so let's see what happens if I make this layer brighter. So I make that pretty bright and you can see the image goes more blurry. If I turn this layer back on, you can see that basically we've made the entire depth completely go away and everything is white. If I pull this down, we're making everything back to normal. And if I do this, we're going to make everything black, except that part right there. Okay. And if we do that, then nothing is going to be out of focus. Okay. Everything is perfectly clear. Really though, we don't want to make massive adjustments though. So let's go back to our DOF and then we need to click on a focus point. So for the focal distance, in order to really see this with this effect, we do need to increase this to something silly like 25, just so we can see what is in focus. And then you have a blur focal distance. And for this to work, we basically just increase this value until we can see the part of the ship that we want to be in focus. So in this case for us, we want to look at, you could either look at the gun or the canopy. That is what really needs to be in focus. That is what the main point of this shot is. So we'll do something like maybe 0.1. Uh, nope, it's a little bit more, so 0.15. Something more like this, where this is all in focus. That is that is exactly what we need. Okay, we don't want anything else to be super blown out because while the camera lens blur effect is useful for doing this type of work, it doesn't do a good job with edges, as you can see here. If we go back to our environment depth, it's not going to do a great job with the edges here. So this is a case where we might want to go back into our environment depth, go to our depth CC, turn this layer on. And we might just want to add a little bit of less contrast between this edge. And usually you don't want curves to look this weird. You want to do something that's a little bit more like this. In this case, though, it's going to be pretty okay like this. But we just lessen the contrast now. Before it was like this. Now it's like this. So if I go back to the main composition, it's still going to be pretty bad around that edge though. So th those are things that we can do to kind of make the, we can selectively choose which objects are more in focus and less in focus this way, but we're never going to have the blur that high. In fact, the most we're probably ever going to go is something like five. So when the value is so low, it, it's going to look okay. Now, one thing that we can also do to kind of soften up some of this, because we do see aliasing here. So we could make a very, very high quality render, which is going to fix that. And when we do make a higher quality render, all of this graininess is going to go away. But we do also want to make 
some of the sharpness here go away. Like you can kind of see aliasing on this rock. So what we could do is add a second camera lens blur effect. And we could place it either above or below. It doesn't really matter. But this one is going to be our, our main one that coats everything. But it's going to coat it at a very, very small amount, like 0.5. Just so everything has a very soft amount of blur. Turn on our repeat edge pixel. So usually you don't have anything that's super sharp. You can also lower that to like 0.25 or something. Just something to take a little bit of the harshness of the edge off. Like this rock here now isn't going to be so aliased. Some of that really spiky detail here is not as noticeable. Okay. You could also make the floor more out of focus, but I think in this case, the focusing works pretty well for what we need. Uh, if you are really interested in doing a lot more with depth of field, there are a few plugins that are available for After Effects. They are paid plugins. So if you are trying to do more compositing with After Effects in particular, Camera Lens Blur has a really nice blur effect, but the depth functions are pretty bad. There's a plugin called Fast Bokeh, which is pretty good. There's also another one called Frischluft, and that one is a lot more expensive. It, it's pretty good, but Fast Bokeh is, is really good too. And that allows you to just like select a point and allows you to blur it. And it also handles the edges a lot better. But we're going to have so much dust being kicked up that looks good and it will it'll look fine. So if I toggle this on and off, you can see that that really does put a lot more focus on the ship. Now, if you crank this value up even more, it's going to begin to make the set look like you're on a miniature set. You get a lot more blurring here, but that's not really, not really good. It's not really what we want. Okay. And that edge is going to be pretty horrendous. So let's do for the maximum value, something like five or even like three or something, just to get a little bit of focusing, but something that looks pretty reasonable like that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. If it's about the line of the hard edge that you see in the background, if you increase the blur too much, then I'll probably just direct you to Fast Bokeh or Frisch Luft. So those effects are going to do a lot better job with that issue than the camera lens blur effect. But if you have other questions, I might be able to answer those. All right, see you guys in the next video.